I'm Alan Partridge. Uh, you're watching and listening to Radio Norwich. Singer, actor, family man. Started off a mod, became a rocker. Roger Daltrey, who are you? Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Well, who are you? Ho, ho. Ho, ho. Well, well, let's find out. You were born in 1943 in uh, Great Bookham, Surrey. Uh, fate dealt the young Roger a cruel blow when your father was tragically killed on the battlefield. And uh, in in 19... No, no, no. no. Um, um, uh, no. I was born in Hammersmith right. okay. and uh, 1944. Right. My father um, came home from um, the war. I'll... I see what this is rather embarrassing. This, so I've, I've, um, this, this, someone's given me next work, week's uh, research notes. It's actually Roger Waters. Sorry about that. Oh, yes, I'm terrible <laughs> like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I once <laughs> easily uh, done. Yeah, yeah. I once, uh, I'm terrible with names. I once interviewed uh, Dave Gilmore, and I called him Sir Tim Rice. Uh, yeah, a bit embarrassing. He laughed it off at the time, but um, when I was leaving, when I was heading off, I noticed someone had taken a key down the side of my car. I, you know, I just, I wonder. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm not implying. That wouldn't have been Dave. He's, he's not. You know, not mm, no. Not. Well, I mean, he left without saying goodbye. You know, and I thought it was a bit strange. So um, it's probably just coincidence. So. Anyway, that's that's the, all these these notes are for the Roger Waters interview. That's next week. That's the big one. Okay, no problem. Um, so sorry for getting confused with. Well, the... I don't really mind being confused with Floyd because I, I mean, that, that, to me, they're one of the better of the of the big man. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, and of course, and you did warm up for them at uh, Live Eight, which yeah. was. Really good of you. I have to say, uh, the, the Who for me, some, in, in, in your day, you know, you had some very clever lyrics, were very creative, um, but at the same time, you didn't take any nonsense. Um, there was nothing pansy ish about you. Someone once described you as a kind of kinks for welders. You know, that's fair. We were a bit rough and ready, yeah, in those days, but um, I think as we got older, we've we kind of we quietened down a little bit. Yeah. Only a little bit. Uh, <laughs> only a little bit. I, I should actually tell you, actually, I did. Um, I, I, I actually once used one of your lyrics to uh, to chat up a lady who I'm taking to the pictures tomorrow night. Really? Yes, I did. I, I, um, I first met her um, as she was uh, raffling a Maserati at Gatwick Airport. And um, I, she's a very, very glamorous woman. Uh, she's 49, um, but I think she's lying. Lovely woman. Yeah, so, no, I started off a uh, bit of text, uh, texting each other with sort of cheeky messages. Um, I, uh, she, she started off, uh, she, she, she texted me, she said, Are you hungry? And I texted her back, You better, you better, you bet. So, of course, <laughs> the lyric from uh, one, of, one, of your, one of my favourite songs uh, of yours. And she didn't actually know what I meant. Um, <laughs> she, she, she doesn't like the who. Um, but I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. She's, uh, she's into Ricky Martin and Dido, so, um, yeah, it's... Uh, doesn't really fit into your demographic, as they say. Hmm. I think mean, I could live with that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, was just, it was just a first date, you know. It's um, nothing, nothing. We didn't, we didn't go too far. Just steak and eggs at Garfunkel's, um, very casual, you know. Um, ended up spooning her in front of Newsnight. Yeah. Um, second time I took her temp in bowling, followed by a battered cod. Uh, that was uh, rather more interesting. Ended up having a kiss and cuddle in the back of a Vectra. Um, really? Yeah, you've got to be da- you've got to be very careful dating over fifty because um, I mean, look at Whiteley, boo, game over, you know. Um, yeah, the poor chap died of pneumonia, and what people forget um, is that pneumonia has a P in it. Now the sixties, uppers, downers, purple hearts, hash. Shit, heavy shit, dust, chasing the dragon, monkey on your back, ferret down your trousers. How far do you go with your thrill seeking? Um, well, it was it was around, and um, I'm not an angel, but it wasn't really my kind of thing. Right, right, okay. Um, you say that, but um, how do you explain uh, one of your solo albums, Ride a Rock Horse? Which I think we've got a picture of it. Can we just can we flash that up on the screen? I think we can see that. There we go. Um, the, on the cover, you see a picture of a horse with your torso growing out of its neck. Now, you don't think about things like that after a pot of tea, but you might after some pot. Yeah, but I mean that's just the creative process. I, I, I mean it was. Uh... It's not necessary to do drugs just to come up with an idea like that, and it was, it was just a, it was a bit difficult. Um, we had to actually raise the, the horse's um, 
private parts for the mothers of America at the time. That was the only problem we had with it. Really? But it, what, there wasn't really any drugs involved. Oh, no, but I think that's. I think that's. I think that's actually a very good. Um, it, it's good to show that you sort of you're thoughtful about uh, people who buy arms because no, you know, um, no one wants to see uh, uh, a horse's cock. On, it's uh, very nice and all that. Um, talking about the past, but. I'm a bit short of time, and I only really came to talk about my charity uh, work. Roger, Roger, Roger. Everyone wants to talk about the charity work. You know. um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, we'll get round to that, trust me. I'm not, I'm not getting paid for this. Um, just to go back to the whole drugs thing, I, I was never pulled into the whole drug scene. My, my, There was one time, my only experience was, uh, someone gave me poppers on Bonfire Night in 1990, um, I can't say I enjoyed it. I got very paranoid and spent the evening in my room listening to Vangelis. Uh, but it was a life-changing experience. People criticise drugs often and say that uh, they're mostly bad, but I think, for me, it opened up a, a whole new window to a new way of thinking. I mean, before that, I'd never have worn a, a bomber jacket in an interview. So, um, so Now, in 1987, I saw David Bowie being lowered onto stage... Uh, and he was sitting in an armchair being lowered from a giant glass spider. And he was on the telephone. And the audience uh, just burst out laughing. Um, now, hats off to the guy for trying something different. But uh, at the same time, it must have been embarrassing for him. Um, I mean, Peter Gabriel once wore a big mask. Have you ever done anything really embarrassing? You know, apart from the, the cover of Ride a Rock Horse. Can we see that one more time? Well, I mean, I'm sure I did, but... Um you know, we've all got carried away at times, but you have to try everything in those days. You have to be noticed. You must have been devastated by the advent of the cordless microphone, um, leaving you unable to do your lasso thing, um, which, of course, you made your own. Um, I mean, during the non-singing bits, uh, you, you must have felt a bit surplus. I mean, did, did, did you ever feel a bit self-conscious? Because, of course, in the past, you could, you could do that when you weren't singing, during a solo or... I mean, I never really used them. I avoided them like the plague. And, and I, well, actually, look, I don't really want to talk about that. I, I came to talk about the charity. Yeah, so yeah, I think you made that point. Um, I really would, really don't want to keep going back to okay, it. Okay, all right, fire ahead. I find on. it difficult talking about the old mm -hmm. days. There's a lot of painful memories there. You know? mm. Um, now. So can I... Yeah, just, just fire ahead. Talk about the charity for a bit, if you want. That's fine. OK, well, um, I have to say that it's only through uh, shows like the Albert Hall and sales of DVDs like this one that we're able to raise money and awareness for teenagers with cancer. Yeah. So um, put your hands in your pockets, buy it. Buy it, yeah. That, that's great. You, you done? Okay. Uh, well, um, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can, uh, you know, I mean, if there's anything else you want to say, you know, we've got time. Just, uh, just deal with the whole charity stuff in one go, so it doesn't bring down the rest of the interview. Yeah. Boo hoo! Now, I didn't start the uh, Teenage Cancer Trust, but you haven't got a monopoly on uh, on caring, Roger, because uh, I'm actually a very active member of the National Trust. I'm very closely involved in their work restoring country houses. Um, in which the tenants can't often afford to uh, pay for basic repairs, uh, re-roofing their house. I mean, it, it is really is heartbreaking. Um, sometimes these people are forced uh, into selling a painting that may have been in the family for generations. Um, but to see the look of joy on, the, on their face uh, of someone who's just been told he'll be getting a million pounds uh, grant to repair the roof, um, it, it, it is the kind of thing that makes it all worthwhile. It really, it really does. It's heartrending. Um, but sometimes, tragically, we are too late, um, and that that really does break your heart. Um, one gentleman in Yorkshire had to leave a beautiful 28-bedroom house and move to a detached six-bedroom house in Chester. And when I heard that, I thought, I've just got to get involved. Um, everyone's got the favourite charity, uh, Bono and Geldof. They've got first dibs on Africa. Uh, you've bagged cancer, fair enough. And I... Um, you help aristocrats live in big houses. Well, I mean, otherwise they have to uh, sell those lovely old houses and they get taken over by lottery winners and rock stars. And, yeah. <clears throat> you 
Yeah, I mean, Brian Adams can wear his green wellies and drive around in his Land Rover, but he's not fooling anyone, really. Ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball. Uh, from Soho down to Brighton. Um, must have played them all. But I ain't seen anything like it in any amusement hall. That deaf, dumb and blind kid. It sure plays a mean pin ball. Did you get any hassle from the disabled lobby or was it before political correctness? I don't think anyone could have taken offence. I mean, it was... It's, it was just an artist. It was a rock opera. Um, you know, um, it's just it was just a vehicle for for an idea. Yeah, and of course, and he did acknowledge, you know, that despite his disabilities, he was very good at pinball. Um, um, he, I, I mean, you know, you would have thought uh, you would have thought that would have uh, would have rendered him incapable of doing pretty much anything. Um, and, I, and I, I'm all for positive discrimination, but um, if you had actually gone out and got a deaf, dumb, and blind actor. So put it bluntly, he's going to be pretty bad at pinball, isn't he? Well, I don't think we ever would have considered that. I mean, yeah, and uh, not not too hot at acting either. I would have thought. I mean, he's not going to see the clapperboard. He's certainly not going to hear someone say action. You have to poke him with a stick. You know, that's just demeaning. Hair. You had short hair in the sixties when you were a mod. Then you went all curly in the seventies, a la Brian May. Then you cut it short, then you grow it long again. Now it's short. Make your mind up, Roger. What's it to be? I had it cut because I did a film where I played uh, a guy called John McVicker. Yeah, I, I was coming to that. There's, there's, there is an order to the questions. John McVicker is a criminal. Was a criminal. Well, yeah. Well, um, he, you know, he was a criminal and he's now been... Rehabilitated. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I know it's not. It's not. Look, look, it's not gospel. Okay, so don't go. Don't go calling your lawyers, Mister Mister McVicker, or you know, sending the boys round. But um, I, I did hear from someone that uh, Mister McVicker is still fencing pirate DVDs. Um, you know, he might say it's a legitimate business just because he does it at a car boot sale doesn't make it legit. And I know for a fact he was offering a DVD of War of the Worlds, and it's still on at the cinema. John is a very respected journalist these days. Right. Well, good on him. I haven't seen any of his articles, but, you know, I believe you. Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Paul McCartney. Sir Noddy Holder. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think Noddy Holder is Sir. No, I, don't, I think you've got that wrong. Um, yeah, no, it's an asterisk there. It, just, it says unconfirmed. Um, but, you know, the Baron Knights... Um, I mean, they're not real knights, are they? But um, Sir Eric Clapton, Sir Mick Jagger, Mr Roger Daltrey. Does the little green monster ever make an appearance? Well, I've got a CBE. Yeah. They just, they just couldn't go that extra mile, could they? Bastards. Uh, so we're running a bit tight on time now, so I'm gonna, just going to spool through these questions. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Height, does it bother you? No, forget that one. Hope I die before I, I get old. Are you embarrassed? Yes, that's been done. You've answered that before. Let's see once we've got... Uh, did you get rid of the trout farm because people thought it was a euphemism for whorehouse? Do you want to go there? Is it still open? I'm sorry, I'm, I was up very late with these questions. Um, they're a bit... Uh, oh, hang on, here we go. Daltrey, you're an embarrassment, swinging your microphone round like a big lasso. Go home, go home and trim your hedge. Leave the rocking to the young ones like Lenny Kravitz. Does it hurt you when people say things like that? As long as they turn up on the night and they're paying good money for your tickets and you're still selling out. Well, you're still selling out? A, we still sell out and I don't give a toss. When do you hang up the old jean jacket? When people say, Oi, you should be wearing tartan slippers not wearing rock shoes and shiny trousers. Well, it only remains for me to say I've always been a huge, huge fan. I can honestly say that you are my third favourite 60s band. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Roger Whittaker. It's Roger Daltrey you're talking to. Again, you got the, the wrong... You don't know who the fuck I am, do you? Who yes. the fuck are you? Um, Alan Partridge, I host uh, uh, oh, Up With The Partridge. I can get your shit together. I can give you my time. I want to talk about charity. You go for all that crap. You have all those wrong people. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
having a good sense of humour there. Wasn't really, wasn't really annoyed. Wasn't really annoyed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Private. <laughs> <laughs>